Welcome to our fifth annual Library Con. I'm here with artist Chad Thomas. Chad is an illustrator and cartoonist and the artist of a very number of books with a growing list of clients. Having picked up a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles comic at the age of eight, he was confident that comic books and illustration were his calling, and he pursued that dream without abandon. He has worked with a number of publishers in the comic industry on books such as Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Star Wars Adventures, and Mega Man. He also illustrates a number of activity books with different children's publishers. Welcome, Chad, and thank you for joining us. Hi, thank you so much for having me. It's really nice to be here in my house. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is your third time joining us for our library con. Um, the first yes. doing it in your house. Yeah, uh, like I came to your first one, which I loved. It was just a blast, and it was so nice to meet everybody in the community. And um, y'all put on just such a, a great first time show. And I came back. I can't. I think it was this two years later or the second year, and it just was wonderful. So, and I plan to be here this year. And obviously, I'm not. I am. <laughs> <laughs> I am stuck at home as we are all are. But I, I really wanted to to be a part of what y'all were setting up to continue to do something for uh, for Pflugerville uh, through the library. So, thank you so much for having me. <laughs> Um, so can you describe how you got into the comic industry? Yeah. Um, so, uh, I, I don't know, to be quite honest, like I, I've been very lucky <laughs> to find work consistently somehow. Um, but when I was a kid, uh, I, I loved to draw. I loved, um, cartoons and just watching like, you know, Ninja Turtles and He-Man and stuff like that. And, but it was, uh, uh my mom went to, a bookstore and came back with like a stack of comics and it had Ninja Turtles comics and Spider-Man and Wolverine. And seeing those, I was like, Oh, that's, that's what I want to do. Like, that's the kind of art that I want to pursue. And that's what I, I want to really um, learn to do and, and do as a career. So I, I, I'm one of the very lucky people that knew when he was seven, exactly what I wanted to do and, and, and pursued it and somehow was able to, to do it. So it's, it's been awesome. So it's a, it's a dream job. Um, so I love the story of how you read uh, Ninja Turtles and then ended up drawing it as an adult. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was, it was my dream job. It's exactly what I wanted to do. I mean, I, that was what I wanted. I didn't just say, Hey, I want to draw comics. I was like, Hey, I want to draw a, a Ninja Turtles comic, like, and specifically the one that was for all ages, uh, like a cartoon, the cartoon book. Um, and I, I got to do that and I got to do that on two different versions of it, which is amazing. So, yeah. And actually I have it here. So here's, uh, some of Chad's work. Um, there's some of it. <laughs> <laughs> we have this book, uh, as well as this one. So, yeah. Um, we're giving these away to people who are watching. So yeah, we'll post the link up and you can follow that and enter to win the books and then pick them up at the library. Absolutely. And if you bring them back to another library con in the future, when they have them, I would love to sign them for you. So I will make sure that I'm there. So I'd love to join you in the future when you do it again. Uh, so a lot of the artists that I've talked to uh, have worked in different industries that are related to art, yeah. like and design, um, how important is it to be fairly flexible with the types of jobs that you'll take on? Um, it's pretty uh, essential if you want to find some varied work. Uh, comics work can be hard to, to land and to find. Um, getting to work on Ninja Turtles was wonderful. And I got to do that for almost six years total. But there were kind of hiatuses and mini series that'd be like, okay, well, we'll do these you know, three or five issues, and then we'll take a break for six months. So, you know, if I'm, you know, in between jobs, like I need to keep other things rolling. So having a background and the ability to maybe stretch into some other um, uh, activities like uh, some graphic design, which isn't something I do. I know a lot of other uh, artists who do that um, or doing spot illustration, which is something that I do a lot of, or um, illustration for activity books, um, that's something that, uh, is possible, um, that I like to stretch my legs into quite a bit. Uh, I've done some science books, some brain quest books. Um, gosh, what else did I do? Um, oh, and I, I do, uh, I've done a, a handful of other activity books for, um, 
uh, an imprint called Odd Dot from Macmillan called Tinker Active. Uh, and they're all, they're usually like preschool through second grade, like ELA, math, science, um, kind of broken down into really fun projects that they can do. And so I've done all the illustrations for those. So um, those have been some of my favorite work that I've gotten to do uh, while simultaneously doing comics a lot of the time. <laughs> I've had to juggle both um, uh, at times, but uh, yeah, it's nice to be able to to stretch into those areas. Um, so right now you're working with Epic Books. Uh, can you tell us a bit about that and Cat Ninja? Yeah. Uh, so I'm working with Epic Books. Um, and so some of, I'm, I'm sure a lot of folks might be familiar with it now. Um, it's a uh, kind of like a, a Netflix for children's books for kids that um, uh, it's everything's all digital on an iPad or like a computer screen. Uh, and like kids can pick it up and they can run through and find a ton of different children's books. Um, so, and like Netflix, they have their own like original content. Um, they have uh, like prose books, just illustration books for kids. And uh, they also do some comics. So I was able to hook up with them uh, back in December, uh, a good friend of mine and uh, editor who's brought me onto a few different projects, Colleen uh, Venable, brought me in to do some short stories for a book called Cat Ninja. Uh, and it, uh, it was a lot of fun, <laughs> it was a blast. I really, really loved it. I loved working with her on those two stories and as we worked on them, they um, approached me and asked if I would like to continue and do like the main story and kind of branch out and do longer stories and monthly books. And so that's really what I'm doing now. Um, and it is a blast. It has been one of my favorite things I've ever gotten to work on. Uh, the team at Epic is just incredibly supportive and incredibly fun to work with. Um, and it's been awesome. So, yeah. So if, if you want to check out Cat Ninja, uh, check it out on the Epic app. I think my I have two issues, two short stories there now, and then I will have a um, my regular issue, and then I have one full issue, and then everything else is monthly from now on. So yeah. Awesome. And I do believe they will be collected at a certain point in time in the future. It's great. Yeah. So what does a typical workday look like uh, for you when you're creating? Ah, well, it depends on how I'm feeling <laughs> and what I've got to do for the day. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, it depends on what I'm doing because if it's like a thumbnail day and thumbnails are um, the portion of the project where I'm really looking at the script, I'm really reading and I'm, I'm kind of like puzzling out exactly what it's going to look like on the page, how I want to carry like the reader's art through it, um, throughout the page, how I want to maybe incorporate sound effects or do I need to pull the, the camera back or go in for a close up? And so that's the hardest part for me. That's the hardest part of the job. Um, and like, I need it quiet. Uh, I usually will put some headphones on and I will put some kind of you know, like easy, you know, no, no lyric music that will just kind of, I can kind of block everything out and really get focused, um, which has been hard uh, with, with a, house full of kids running around <laughs> and poking asking hey can i play a video game hey can i do this hey can i do this hey can i sit behind you so those are the the, the weeks where i'm i get a, a little testy and grumpy because <laughs> i've got a lot that's the that's the one where i have to really use my brain to figure everything out um uh once that's done uh i will go into penciling or line art and inking phase and those are a little easier so um I usually try to get all the thumbnailing stuff done uh, usually sometime at, like from like maybe 11 to four or like after lunch, just because in the morning after I wake up, uh, eat breakfast, you know, do whatever errands or workout or whatever we need to do around the house. It takes a little bit to kind of rev the engine. So it's a little easier to kind of do some sketching or kind of tighten those thumbnails into pencils than it is for me to actually really do thinking so yeah so i i just kind of work throughout the day my wife works from home too so we kind of will bounce the kids back and forth when she's got meetings 
I'll manage them, make sure they're not at each other's throats or they're uh, finding, finding something constructive to do. Um, and when I'm, you know, in thumbnail, like creative mode, like she will kind of, you know, open her door and kind of be a little bit on, on with them. So we'll bounce them back and forth and just help each other get through the day and get what we need to get done done. Yeah. Um. So about how long would it take you, would you say, to get through a whole issue? Hmm. Uh, <laughs> so it, it, I would say it takes about a month. Um, so Cat Ninja these days is uh, 25 pages, including the cover. So 24 interior in the cover. Um, so what we've started to do lately is um, I've kind of skipped my penciling phase and I'm jumping straight from thumbnails to line art inks. So I'm kind of cutting out almost two and a half to three weeks of work, um, which is awesome because I'm just getting more comfortable with working with them and knowing what they're looking for. And they trust that they don't need me to do like a real tight pencil work for them. They know that I'm going to be able to provide them with exactly what they want. So um, we're, we're kind of in a new phase right now where we're, we're testing that out so far. So good. Um, but usually it takes about a month to do that. Um, and that, uh, allows me to even have like weekends. So when I did stuff for like Archie, like Mega Man or Ninja Turtles for IDW, the schedule could be so tight sometimes, um, and that sometimes I didn't get a weekend, which was ugh, awful. Um, but working with Epic and doing Cat Ninja has just been awesome because they've been so supportive. They really want me to take those breaks. Um, and the schedule is uh, comfortable enough that I'm not having to like overload myself and double up on a day. Like if I get a page done, I'm like, oh, awesome. I, I did it. And I can spend more time on that page, like really tightening it up and, and uh, making it the way that I want to be instead of having to plow through it to move on to the next thing. So, yeah, I would say about a, these days, about a month. Um, th there have been days where I've uh, I got but turtles there was maybe a turtles issue i got done in like three three weeks like basically just ran through it maybe even two weeks it was bananas but i got it but yeah um so we'd like to know a little bit more about the tools you use every artist has their favorite tools uh yeah. so what do you have to have um well it's different for everybody um it's kind of hard to show well let's see I, let's see if i can drag mine 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 is this the screen let's see if i get it easy this will get a little peek it's my this is my cintiq screen so and i'm moving back over there he's a big guy um that's what i use uh every single day um so i used to do a lot on pen and paper and i used to have a big drawing desk, desk back there with lights and all my supplies and just as uh i i grew as an artist um and as i began i got more work i just realized how much faster i could get things done digitally and so i went from uh doing everything in pen and paper to doing pencils on here on the computer and then printing them and inking them to doing everything full digital and nowadays i've just gone full digital um so i use my cintiq with my 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 fancy pen um when i am uh when i do want to do commit when i have time to do commissions or when i want to draw for myself i usually just have like a little sketchbook or um some bristol to kind of play around with i got a drawer i do have a drawer full of oh my gosh what a mess that is i do have a drawer full of pens uh and brushes and stuff like that that i like to take out and play around with um but uh, i mostly do everything right on the computer nowadays which is can kind of be a bummer because i don't have like original art to sell anymore like i used to with turtles um but uh i i'll i'll take it for for the speed <laughs> that i yeah. that i get from working on the computer these days um so one of the coolest things uh, to me about comic artists um is to come up with characters um so can you tell us a bit about the process of coming up with the look of a character Oh, well, I mean, it depends on what the character, um, like, is it a hero? Is it a villain? What kind of world do they inhabit? Um, I've been, uh, really lucky to work on a lot of, um, uh, like established, um, 
designs and characters. So when I did stuff for uh, like the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the uh, 2012 animated series, they had a very, you know, their designs and I kind of worked off of those. Rise of the TMNT, um, which was the the new version that's been on Nickelodeon for the last two or so years, um, that had its own distinct visual style. And uh, so anytime I had to design a character, I'd really have to think, okay, well, like the way that I draw maybe this pizza delivery man is very different from the way that I would draw it in this 2012 book. Or he'd be also be very different from the way that I might draw him in like uh, the Mega Man comic book. Um, so I always have to take uh, into account the 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 the, um, the art design that uh, is in place in um, in those in those specific issues. With something like Cat Ninja, um, I came on board um, for uh, Yehudi Mercado, who did the first five issues, um, and so he had already established these characters and some of these designs. But Epic was wonderful enough to just allow me to really do my take on the characters and allow my, the way that I like to tell a story and design characters to kind of come into play now. So the way that I draw Cat Ninja is very different than the way that you, uh, Yehudi would do it. Um, so now when we're designing characters, uh, I actually do get to think like, oh man, now it's my world that I get to play. And now these are the characters that I, um, I get to come up with. I, I still kind of have a, uh, a visual style that we're kind of going with and, that I, but it's kind of mine now, which is really cool. <laughs> but um, when I'm doing something like that, we always think hero or villain. I try to get a whole bunch of um, different uh, different designs and, and sketches together, and I'll send them to uh, Matthew Cody, who is the writer for Cat Ninja, um, or like my editor and art director, and like they will um, they'll look at those and they're like oh well we like this one but maybe we like this one a little bit better can you combine them what about this one that one so we'll kind of mix and match and play around for a little bit to to kind of find the exact one we want to go with and then move forward so yeah it's kind of how we're doing it nowadays yeah so a lot of collaboration yeah yeah um so do you have a favorite project that you've worked on um, right now, I mean, honestly, it's Cat Ninja. <laughs> I'm just having a real fun time with it. It's, it's been, um, it's, uh, when I worked for Turtles, I really loved drawing the Ninja Turtles. I loved being able to kind of live that, that, you know, goal of mine and that dream that I had since I was a kid. Um, but also like, I really was just a, a, another artist and there's been hundreds of Ninja Turtle artists over, you know, their, their their nearly 30 year career or 30 years. Um, and so uh, for, for when, uh, for me, like I just kind of was, I felt sometimes um, that I was like, all right, well, I'm just another cog in the machine, just turn it out, just get it out. And because we had to move fast and we were just getting it through, there wasn't a lot of time for collaboration. And we were also tied to the cartoon show. So we were real limited in some of the stuff we could do, like for a good portion of the 2012 book I did, we couldn't use the shredder. Um, I was like, oh man, I want to draw a shredder. <laughs> so um, I couldn't do it. Uh, so we, we got to do it a little bit later on, but not a lot. Um, so, and and I think there were some restrictions a little bit on Rise. Whereas Cat Ninja, because it's wholly Epic's own uh, you know, original content, their creation, um, they're really playing with it and like, having a lot of fun. And it's been a really different experience for me because they brought me into it and said like, Hey, what do you want to do? What do you like? Do you want to do this? What are you kind of into? What are you excited about? What do you not want to draw? Um, what do you, what kind of stories do you want to tell? And, or, Hey, we're trying to break the story. This is where we're at. And just being able to be a part of those meetings and to talk about it, or to even just sit back and listen to them hash it out has made me feel like a part of a team, which has been awesome. And I'm, I mean, I sit alone in my house all the time anyway. So <laughs> all of a sudden to be able to uh, like get on a zoom call and like be a part of that and talk to people and hash that stuff out. has been fantastic. So it's, it's very fulfilling for me. Yeah. Um, so uh, are there any characters you haven't worked on yet that you would like to draw? 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, I would like to. I got to do Star Wars for like two short stories. I wish I could keep going there. I love the 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 two issues of Star Wars that I did. Were that was a blast. Those, I, that's, oh, those are also some of my favorite projects, just because I, I just really they allowed me to really just be me and that as well. And even though that Star Wars does have a very distinct style and all the, these very recognizable characters, they it's always felt to me that they're a little more relaxed with a lot of people to kind of tell it in their own way. And so if I could go back and do some Star Wars stuff, I'd love to. Um, I wish I could do some more Marvel stuff somehow. I got to do like a like a small Avengers cover for one of the IDW action series. Um, Spider-Man would be amazing. So there's always... Um, you know, something that I just want to do to just be like, ah, I can check it off the bucket list. I can say like, oh, I, I drew these characters. Like I got to draw, I had to draw Batman on a Ninja Turtles cover once. And I was like, I get it. I drew that. You know? So that was, that, that was a neat thing to be able to say, uh, you know, I get it. I drew Batman. Yeah. I think I remember that we, we have that here. Yeah. Um, I mean, I guess I can draw Batman whenever I want, but I'd just be like, it was actually fun. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing so stopping any, me. Yeah. Um, is there anything that you don't like drawing or that maybe it took you a long time to figure out how to draw it? Um, I still don't like drawing vehicles. That's tough. Uh, it's just not... I just find them boring. I think what I need to do is find a way to give my vehicles a little more character. So, because I like drawing my the my characters acting and faces and expressions, and drawing a car is boring. But there are really fun ways to do that. But I uh, I, I just have not taken the time to really practice um, and do that. Horses are a real pain. I don't like going motorcycles. Those are those are the things that I'm like oh, I don't I don't like drawing people sitting on top of you know, a motorcycle or a horse or a bicycle. Those aren't fun. <laughs> if I could not draw those, I'm good. Um, but you know, sometimes the story calls for it. Just gotta do it. So, yeah. Yeah. I, that's it. That's yeah. I was doing another interview last night and I asked the same question and he also said bikes. <laughs> it's, just really just, it's like, they're just weird. They're just weird. You know, cause like the bike, I don't know. It, it, like they're, they're very drawing. The bike is actually pretty easy. Drawing the person on the bike, a person riding the bike, is not something I enjoy. I'm like, ah, I don't, I don't like that. So, I, just a regular bicycle that I've gotten a little used to, but yeah, horses and motorcycles, no thanks. Those are those are my those are my bottom two. Yeah. <laughs> um. So, can you tell us about your upcoming projects? <sighs> uh, just more cat ninja. <laughs> right now, that, right now, that's it. So um, I'm, I'm working on, uh, so issue six came out, uh, I want to say like a week and a half or two weeks ago. Um, and issue seven should be coming out right at the end of September. Uh, I am finishing, putting the finishing touches on eight and nine, like in the, in the next two weeks. And then 10, I will draw that in October. And I think that that one will be due, will show up in the app like in uh, December or maybe early January with the way that uh, winter break is now, but um, that is what I'm doing. So uh, <clears throat> I'm just busy um, doing that on the, on the daily and I'm just loving it. So it's been an awesome experience and it's kept me busy and it's just been very, very fun, very fulfilling. And my kids love it. Like for my kid, I drew Ninja Turtles for like six years and they were like, eh, whatever. and now I'm drawing cat. You're drawing cat. Ninja? What? <laughs> just, that was awesome. Yeah, they're impressed. <laughs> they were. It was nice. <laughs> um, so thank you so much for joining us again. Absolutely. Unusual. Um, and hopefully next year we'll be back at the library. Um, hopefully. We'll be back there. Yeah. So um, now that we're wrapped up with the interview, um, Chad is recording a video for us. Um, so if you want to follow along, mm -hmm. you can some drawing utensils. Um, Chad, so you can... Um, let them know what you're going to be going over. Absolutely. Uh, so uh, I wanted to talk about exactly how I get from the the script to maybe the finished uh, product. So what is, uh, you know what am I looking at when I begin those thumbnail uh, thumbnails? 
how do I thumbnail um, and kind of break down that page. And then I can kind of show you exactly where, what that page will look like when it's penciled and then inked. And if I might can dig up a file, I might be able to find one that's colored and maybe even lettered. So, but you can show you where it goes from start to finish. Awesome. Uh, well, thanks again. And Absolutely. a great weekend. Thank you. You too. And thank you everybody for having me. And I hope to see you all again soon. Bye. Bye. Hello, everybody. I want to thank the Pflugerville Library again for inviting me to be a part of their virtual Comic-Con this year. Uh, I'm so sorry that we weren't able to have it in person, but I'm, I, I'm just so happy that we've been able to come together to put something uh you know, on for your community. And um, I appreciate you y'all let me be a part of it. So um, my name is Chad Thomas, uh, as I, hopefully, you know, after maybe watching um, the, the interview that uh, we just posted. Um, but uh, I, I wanted to show a little bit of my process or what goes into making a comic book page. Like, what do I see on the script? What do I see on the screen? How do I work? Uh, and I thought I'd walk you through it. So to begin, um, a lot of people ask me, do you just make it up yourself? Do they send you something? Like, how does that work? Um, so yes, actually, they do send me something. Um, I uh, get a script um, usually uh, or from uh, from the company that I work from. This is a script from um, Rise of the TMNT that, um, that I worked on a few years ago. Um, and so what I usually get is a big document with a whole bunch of page 20 or panel and what's on that page, panel one, sound effects that are there, uh, who might be speaking. Um, and so what I will do after reading the script multiple times, I will go into, um, I, I'm currently using a, a, um, a program called Clip Studio. Uh, and I will go into Clip Studio and I will work out like what they call a thumbnail or a rough draft or sketch. Um, and mostly uh, I really do it from um, uh, just doing what the script says. Like I'm not changing a lot. Uh, that does happen sometimes. And I'll show you uh, y'all a page that I really um, change what they're asking for in a minute. But, um, really, so I look at what they want, panel one, panel two, what, what do I, what do I need to show? Does, does it need an establishing shot? Where are the characters? I don't want all of the, um, the action to seem like it's just the same pose or the same characters. I want to make sure that I'm breaking it up. So as you can see here, like I've got Donnie, it says Clang, um, from the sound effect. This is the end of the book, page 20. And he's kind of in that same pose, uh, on like here and here and here and here. Oops. I gotta get rid of that. Um, and so I needed to change that, uh, you know, but I kind of saw that in my thumbnail, but I was just kind of sending this off to show my editor and the writer, Hey, here's what I'm thinking based on the script that you showed me or about what I'm working from. Um, and what they will do, they will send me some notes back. They will say, Hey, that's good. Go for it. And so what I'll do after that, I'll take that script. Um, and I will, uh, end up going to, oops, sped ahead to pencils. And so I'll take that, um, their notes and I will, pencil it out. So using Clip Studio again, I just tighten everything. So I go from that rough thumbnail to uh, something a little bit tighter, something that's um, cleaner and able to uh, to show this is really what it's going to look like in the script and on the page or on the page when people are reading it. Um, but again, it's still pretty rough. There's no colors. There's no uh, inks. There's no real, there's no line weight changes, but I'm just showing, um, I'm really just kind of working it out as, as I go. So that's kind of the next phase. Um, and that can take anywhere, you know, from, you know, like a, a few days to, to, a, for a whole issue, it can take me from anywhere for, um, like a few weeks to maybe a whole month. Um, like some pages can take to pencil page can take like maybe a few hours, some could take like a full day. It really just depends on what the script is asking for and how many characters are there, how many, how much dialogue is going to probably take up the background so I don't have to draw as much background or where, where are they in the city? Um, so uh, that is the pencil phase. Now, after that, again, I send it back to my editor for notes because they might see something that 
isn't quite working. They might be like, oh, well, this line maybe needs to change here. Maybe we need this expression or we've decided to go this way on the script. Um, this page did not change. <laughs> so if we go down, I really just take that pencil or those pencils and I really just tighten it up even more. Uh, I'll add some line weight. I'll add in some shadows, um, some bursts, and that will be, I'll build that in some different layers in Clip Studio. Um, I think I might've inked this one in Photoshop even. Um, but like I will plan out my panels on a separate layer. I plan out my characters on a separate layer sometimes, some of the burst. So it just gives the colorist um, some options to play with. So they're not having to, to mess around with it too much. Um, and that's really the ink phase. It's just really taking those, I, my pencils are notoriously tight. I, I get made fun of from my um, some of my artist friends for having pencils that are way too tight. <laughs> and I probably could have uh, like loosened myself up a little bit and tightened everything in the inks, um, which I've begun to do on some different projects just, and it does speed me up a little bit. Um, but on this one, I did very tight pencils, which just translated straight to very quick um, and very easy inks because all the, all the line work and all the decision-making was already done in that phase. But here I'm adding some line weight. Um, as you can see down here, it's a lot thicker than maybe something in the background. Back here, stuff in the back is going to be a little um, thinner. And so when I'm done with that, my job is basically done. Um, that is as far as I normally take things in, uh, in a Ninja Turtles book or a Cat Ninja book that I'm doing for Epic these days. Um, that's as far as I do. I just go to the pencils and inks uh, and thumbnails. But when I'm done with that, I will send it along to a colorist and a letterer, and they will put the finishing touches on, on the whole script. Uh, so here, when, when I send it to them, uh, to uh, Heather Breckel, she colored all of my Ninja Turtle stuff. Um, she will go ahead and she'll do all of the, that fine uh, Ninja Turtles awesome color work that she does. Um, and then they will input the lettering. Um, I am, unfortunately, I'm not sure who lettered this one. Um, and that is what it takes to go from start to finish on a, on a normal comic book page. Um, so there's, it's a whole team of people. We've got the editor giving notes, the writer writing the script and giving me a few notes. I'm doing the thumbnailing and the penciling and the inking. There's a colorist. There's a letterer. There are a lot of artists and illustrators who do it all themselves, who do the whole thing, and they are incredible. Um, but on a, a book like this, on a monthly book, normally you'll see a team working together to get these out on a, on a regular basis. Um, so... Uh, and the same thing uh, happens with Cat Ninja. So we've got you know my editor, writer, myself, and letterer. Um, and I get a, a, a lot more notes on Cat Ninja, but they're very note friendly. It's, it's a much more, we're really building it as a team um, together and really refining it as we're going through it, which has been a really wonderful experience. So let me show you a page uh, real quick that I really did kind of work with and change a little bit um, to, uh, from what they originally asked. So that, that was a start, this one was a start to finish, that's what it was. So this one right here um, was from uh, Rise of the TMT issue three. Uh, and it was by the same writer, uh, Matthew K. Manning, um, who wrote all a lot of, uh, mostly, almost all the Ninja Turtle stuff that I got, uh, got to do. Um, so here, uh, he wrote a script and it's page one is only five panels. Uh, and as you can see in my thumbnail here, I actually ended up doing nine. Um, that might sound crazy to some people. Like, why would you want to add more work? Why would you add, want to add more panels to the page? Doesn't that seem like more work? Well, when I read the script, as I was going through it, I was realizing, oh man, there's just so many different action beats that I feel like that's hard to show like in one panel. You know, there's a lot of information here. That, to ha that I needed to parse through. We wanted to keep a lot of things secret. I'm gonna, I'll spoil it here. It's, it's a pizza delivery boy getting like a pizza, but we wanted it to seem mysterious and crazy and stuff like that. Um, and it just didn't seem to work with five panels. And so um, as the artist, um, I've got the script, but they, 
uh, a lot of writers and editors, they will trust their artists to, to read it and to maybe kind of push back or give those adjustments or say, actually, I think this is going to work better in the script for what we're trying to go for. We're trying to go for something quick, beat by beat, <clears throat> and not something that needed to be um, like, and, and in fact, if I had done, done this in five panels, I think it would have been more work because I've had to show more in each panel, really working it out. And I tried over and over and over and it just wasn't working. Um, so what I did is I sent them this thumbnail to say like, Hey, um, what do you think of this? How's this look? What do you think is, you know, are we still getting what you're going for? Um, and I think the response was basically like, well, if you want to do nine panels, go for it. <laughs> and again, it was actually a lot easier. Um, so that's the, uh, the way that I broke that panel down. I wanted something kind of real simple that you're kind of working through. Um, and again, uh, for page layout, I wanted things to kind of move through each page. I wanted, you know, as you're opening this door, this angle to kind of move you into here, the briefcase to move you over there as you're, you know, to kind of go back and forth to guide you through the way this page is going again, as this eye bar, well, we'll get to that in a minute. Um, so <laughs> that is the thumbnail. Uh, and again, I have very tight pencils. Um, and that's what that turned into. Um, so it's, it's very tight. Uh, to really give them exactly, hey, this is what, what I'm going for. This is what I want to see. Um, so that thumbnail is real rough. But here, you know, I'm adding a lot more details, like a cat, uh, a lot more garbage stuff. I'm having to really get those bike details. Everything's in shadow here, um, which is, again, why I made this page actually kind of easy to do because I wasn't um, I, I wasn't having to uh, draw a ton of background detail. Uh, cause I wanted to keep things as mysterious as I could. Uh, when you see those X's sometimes when you're looking at pencil work, that just means fill it up with black, you know, right? Just fill all that space up with black and shadow, which is why page, uh, the ink page will look like this. Um, and because we had, um, a, uh, uh, like I wanted to keep things really dark, really black, um, I like I have those white panels on there that I had on a separate layer in Clip Studio. So it's just, again, easier for our colors to go in and mess with and play with and to know exactly like where the line art ended. Um, and so that is really what the ink page looked like. So, uh, again, so from script to thumbnails to pencils to inks and to colors, this is what we end up with. So it's it, it's, a, it's a whole team the working on this um together going back and forth saying like hey i might i, I want to push back i think this is going to work better i like this one a little bit better um and if they had pushed back and said well actually i think this would work better you know i pr i really would have said like okay i'll work it out um but i i felt pretty strongly that this would be a more fun uh intro to issue three and and they agreed so I just wanted to show you sometimes that it's not exactly what you see on the page. Some, they do, they do, um, or uh, some companies or editors and artists or writers will give their um, their artists a lot of leeway to be able to play around with it, to mess with it, uh, and to do something that they're comfortable with to create a book that um, they think uh, we think everybody's going to love and enjoy. So, um, again, thank you so much for ha having me at the at the Comic Con, and I I really hope to to meet you all in the future um at the next one we can all be in person uh you can find my uh my current work on the epic app uh with the book cat ninja um where i'm doing uh, where i'm working currently and that can be found monthly for the foreseeable future so thank you all so much and i uh, hope you all have a great day thank you bye